Greetings, fellow victors against the Void God, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Rimworld Anomaly Eldritch Guards, Episode 97, Scholar in Death. Traitors are sort of coded not to um, show up when there's a present threat on the colony tile. So yeah, this is very much a case where they waited until I murdered them all and then they just popped in. Where is map size? Sorry, I'm having to read the uh, the XML code to try to figure out map size. Because I don't remember where that's stored in the XML. might not be able to answer your question very easily. Couldn't I just measure it? I could. Uh, it's 250 by 250. I could just measure it. True. You know, where... The edge here is uh, 10, and then we've got... two thirty, so 250 total. So yeah, it's a 250 by 250. That would have been easier, just to use the plan tool and do a whole measurement. Let's pretend I thought of that. Totally, that was my idea. <laughs> Me getting sidetracked, yes. Uh, Alright, no usable food. Hmm... I'm going to start making fine meals because we really are out of food totally. But uh, I am hoping that the trades that I'm about to do will open up some food buying. So let's see. Mm, wow. You suck. They don't have food. They have steel that I don't want. I'm not sure why you have a biopharite cultist mask that concerns me. Things you shouldn't find on your allies. A nice purple steel chair. They do have animals for sale, true, but I, I don't need, well, alright, and those animals don't have a lot of meat on them. I was mostly looking for vegetables. Alright, so let's dismiss you guys. Bye-bye. Orler, you were really disappointing. Uh, Imperial Trader is going to be even more disappointing because they don't even carry food. So, come on, Zoxo, please. So you had some beef, some pork, some rat meat, some warg meat, no vegetables. There is pemmican. I'll just buy the pemmican. No, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna resort to pemmican. I'll, I'll manage. It'll be fine. And last but not least, Imperial Trade. It's funny that we defeated the entire um, void threat, and now we're just like, oh, good. Uh, but we're really, really hungry. And uh, you got any, anything to eat? <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, we didn't think that far. Oops. I mean, I could go and, like, attack the impids for berries. <laughs> I'm not above that. It honestly doesn't sound like too bad of an idea. Uh, I'll consider it.
C Panda, you have... Okay, so C Panda needs a little bit more side focus if I do want to do that. So that C Panda can far skip us home. But that's currently my plan. To steal the Impid's Berries. I mean, they did just try to breach me, right? So, serves them right. Also, why are they hauling so many corpses? Haul the meat, the food, you dummies. I wonder... Well, actually, I want to keep growing food. I was going to say, I wonder if I turn off my uh, ammo heaters, I can keep this meat frozen, but it would be worse if I stopped growing. All right, C-Pan is going to be on um, house arrest, so he actually meditates for the Psy focus for Farskip. Too bad there's not a food drop permit. I mean, there is. I just don't have it. I have aerodrone and trooper squad. I have all the military ones, not the uh, food ones. Mm. But we're eating nutrient paste made of meat. It's fine. Oh, and a hunting site? To oh, no! The berry site is gone! Oh, well. I guess no berries for me. I could go out to a, a nearby map tile and um, harvest it, but I don't think I really need to do that. We can just do nutrient paste until the rice and corn is ready. Or, I'm not growing corn. Until the rice and potatoes are ready. So there are the quest, pods and bugs. Um, there's really nothing stopping the infestation from spawning inside my base. Uh, in fact, it's very likely it will. So if we do... Pods and bugs, I'm going to want to be ready for the attack to be inside the base. Also, monolith fragments definitely should be kept in the top secret storage. Not with everything else. <laughs> Warg is hunting Ink. Okay. Uh, Ink accepts the, the fight and wins in one swing. You cut its body off. I love how it's just like body destroyed. Come come on, Warg. What were you thinking? He's the singular most difficult opponent on the entire map tile to try to eat with teeth. Why? Just holy hell, why would you try? I think the caribou is a little mad. Now there are two bug parts? Yeah, there's the front half and the back half. It would be kind of gory if, like, the game rendered that properly, where, like, you destroy the body and you get, like, both halves. That'd be neat. And probably raise the... Well, I mean, of the things that you can already do in RimWorld, I don't think the age rating would matter much. For things like that. Alright, whole herd revenge. That's fine. means he's partially pre-butchered. It actually means that there's less meat, because if you destroy the body like that, like if you cut off a leg, for instance, of a, of a, uh, or shoot off a leg of a critter you're hunting, there's less critter left. And then ever since, I think, 1.1, maybe, which uh, improved ranching, 
um, butchering a owned farm farm animal yields more than hunting. So, uh, yield. I think it's. I forget. I forget exactly where it is, but the meat yield for hunting versus the meat yield for um, slaughter. Uh, slaughter yields more. Meat amount. Okay, yeah, that's it. So the meat amount is body size, missing body parts, difficulty. So because I'm on a harder difficulty, I just get less meat total. And then it's reduced if not slaughtered cleanly. And slaughter cleanly is only something you can do to tamed animals. So I'll say tomorrow morning I'll accept the pods and bugs quest and we're accepting it for the top reward because we're looking for honor. I think what I'll do is start making carnivore lavish meals until I have, let's say, 10 of them but take them off of the standard meal policy. And then Devil Eyes gets a royal policy. So royal food would be lavish, 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 chocolate, uh... Ambrosia beer. I think that's it. Oh, and insect jelly. Where is insect jelly in this? Uh, in raw foods. Animal products, insect jelly, and milk. I think those are the, like, royal foods. Let me double check. So, uh, lavish, lavish, lavish. Oh, fines are fine, too. Insect jelly, milk, berries, ambrosia, chocolate beer, goat, and then drugs. So, uh, royal food is going to include the fines as well. It's just that I don't have any fine food. I didn't add berries, but I don't have any berries, so I don't care to add it. Not a big deal. I think for role-playing reasons, it would not be a terrible idea to... Isolate the monolith as well. Um, so that it's not uh, publicly accessible. If I could, I would drop a, an overhead mountain on it or something. But, you know, I can't do that. But what I can do at least is... Because uh, it's not destructible. Is to just isolate it. So that it's not available to the public. Yeah, the really high ranks have uh, lavish only food requirement. The thing is that um, C Pan is flexible, so despite C Pan being a, uh, a countess, she doesn't care for the all the trimmings of nobility. Unlike Devil Eyes, who's like, "Oh yeah, I'm noble," like bow to me. But yeah, otherwise it would have just been lavish only meals for C Pan. But C Pan is uh, not conceited, whereas Devil Eyes is conceited. Would a secure door make more sense? Uh, it's not even going to be doored, but yeah, uh, I, otherwise it would have made more sense. I kind of wish the security doors ha had like a three wide or one wide variety. Because I'm so used to building symmetry, not considering double, double wide. Ooh, that's a lot of elks. I did say I would accept this quest in the morning, so let's rally all our troops here, because I don't know where the bugs are going to pop up, and accept with double eyes again. 
So here's the cataphracts that can die of no consequence. And I would very much like to keep the cataphracts alive. Because I'm trying to be, like, nice. Oh, uh, I didn't... One thing I didn't check... They should be spawning immediately. Okay, I don't see a timed delay on it. Let's go, bugs. Uh, gross. They're spawning here. Little worried about the prisoners, but as long as the prisoners stay put, they should be okay. So, Lady and Tobbs, I want you to, like, go stand by my pods. And then, Brawler Wall. And... Actually, you could join in. I have enough brawlers to tank that you should be fine. So, Wall of Brawler. Oh, they're spawning back here, too. So I might be attacked from behind as well. Stop trashing everything. My poor, poor base. Alright, so there's some in the, uh... I should have probably sequestered the mechs all to somewhere safe. A little late for that now. And Guitar Lillen went pop as a result. This is why deep freezing bases is my preferred um, counter for underground because otherwise you end up in situations where your base is constantly bugged but we're almost done there's only a few left just a lot of repair I think that's it. All the other bugs that are left are uh, down but not dead. All right, Joe bro, time to get to work. There's some serious cleanup. I'm gonna have everyone clean as the highest priority. And that should be the hive. And then the only ones that I want uh, not cleaning would be our best constructors, so Skyra, Fred, and Featherfall. So that they can put the broken things back together. Disrespected throne room. Oh, you don't say. Uh, baby prep. I'll do that in a moment. Okay, all but this bug is now finished off by C Panda. So, Drea and Devil Eyes. You are gonna need a. Let's do some baby decorations. One and two, and then, uh... We're gonna want a crib.
a weird place to be raising a child, but, you know, is what it is. Oh, is there hives elsewhere? Oh, here comes another Imperial Trader. In Seapanda's room. Oh, yeah, yeah, there are hives there. There we go. And reward. So now, Double Eyes is a Praetor. And I'll do the Praetor uh, in a minute. I obviously want to clean up the throne room before doing it, because the throne room is a little, little nasty at the moment. Glad I didn't lose the meditation thrones. That would have been a lot more devastating than just like a uh, drape. The Imperials did help out with cleaning, yeah. That was nice of them. So we're hauling the bugs into the butchery so they don't stink up the place. There's still some repairs left to do and the throne room should become dignified before I do anything else with it. Uh, the insect jelly will be good royal food, I guess. So I'm gonna hold on to that just for the royal food benefit. Oh, crazy, you can sell monolith fragments? I had no idea. I've never played past the win like this, so that's news to me. I'll need to be making baby food. True. So baby food could be made of uh, insect jellies or vegetarian products, and I'm not going to be too choosy about which. And that's part of baby prep. I know the jelly works as baby food, it's just more efficient to make the jelly into baby food than to feed it directly because of the food poison risk. Vomiting babies make their parents upset. Alright, the uh, dignity of this room is very close to the required value. I don't actually see anything that's in the negatives. Hmm. We did just get some jade, so one... 10, 20, 30, 45. We're replacing those walls should raise the um, the value of this room up a bit more. I think it's just that the damaged furniture has reduced the value of the of it, causing the uh, the total value of the room to drop. So the impressiveness is not quite meeting expectations. Oh, uh, the harpsichord did get destroyed, yeah. That'll also do it. So we'll make a new one. We do indeed hate insect meat. An orbital block constrictor that might solve some of our food problems. And red being hunted by Timberwolf. Wow, it's like on top of me. Didn't give me a lot of warning, did it? 
Uh, the rice looks nearly harvestable. Oh, it's harvestable. Good, that'll help. Stop running. What do we even need? I need Plasteel. I have a bunch of signal chips that I'm just going to sell because I don't need them. I know that sounds crazy, but why hold on to something I have no use for? Some tattered thrombo clothing definitely could be parted with. And that's about it. I could buy lavish meals, but I don't really feel like doing that. The other problem is, um, I don't have a bait beacon. Where did my trade goods even go? Uh, probably here. Yeah. That's another thing that we need to repair is the bait beacon and bait beacon area because it got, uh, nuked. By me. Oh, I'm out of sandstone. Uh, interesting. So the Balkans trader was selling marble. If I want to buy marble, that might not be a terrible idea so I don't have to do a lot of stone cutting. I don't think we have enough sandstone to even replace our broken furniture, if I'm reading that correctly. I'm going to do a lot of, a little bit of uh, extra mining in order to get some more sandstone blocks for stone cutting for the repairs. Waste pack drop. Uh, well, it's not for, it's white dominion, but it's not for honor, so I don't care to do it. A dark scholar named Flesh <laughs> uh, who has death refusal. Well, let's see how strong your death refusal is, Mr. Flesh. Actually, I'm going to do one better. Death refuse all you want. When you're six feet under, you ain't coming back. Bye! Enjoy eternal entrapment. <laughs> oh, you popped out. Oh, okay, that didn't work. I think it works when you have a sarcophagus, but apparently it doesn't work when you have just a grave.
So let's try to stick you in a sarcophagus then. Oh, a wooden one. Because I'm not feeling particularly charitable. Yeah, you could hypothetically burn up the corpse so there's nothing left. That would work. But, uh, I'd rather toy with them. Ink, you coming back? There you go. Ah, Peters is berserk again. Alright, Ink. Let's carry flesh. Drop him here. Kill him. Wow, you cut off his head. And bury him. No, don't bury him there. Uh, this is not for him. This. There we go. Is he trying to use death through? Oh no, he got out. Okay, I guess it doesn't work. I thought it did. No, he's dead for good now. Sorry, Dark Scholar, but uh, you really, really came to the wrong place. You, re I, you had to have known that, though. Wow, those guys had quite the social fight. They had a lot of body parts that were almost completely uh, destroyed. Wait a minute. Why? Oh, there's a caribou in there. Okay. I was like, I'm pretty sure that I, uh... He popped out of there. <laughs> that was... But yeah, we, we put one of the fresh caribou kills in it. Alright, Dedora's out, and you are now 58 years old. Um, let's go ahead and... I'm actually going to keep you out of the pod. Now that most of the threat's over, if you are still demented, it's not going to be detrimental. They do have bulk corn and meat here, which is perfect because we need it. I'm going to sell some of the chem fuel that I've made off of the uh, the twisted meat for some food that we need. And luckily for me, because we haven't rebuilt the bait beacon just yet, or the order of the beacon still wrong, no, Bait Peak is still not built. Uh, that all of the food got dropped conveniently exactly where I wanted it. So now we can go back to normal lavish meals. And I'll go down to 20 of them. Forget the carnivore ones entirely. And then the standard meals will not include the lavish. And then the royal food won't include fine. So they can make both fine and lavish meals, satisfying uh, all of the colonists. And their dietary... Well, let's call them restrictions. The guard room's almost rebuilt. We still have some tasks left before I want to do the Praetor ceremony, though. Like, all of the base repair. But I deprioritize the high-priority hauling so that we can actually do the repair stuff. In a minute. Are you idle? That was weird. I think probably idle because this wall hadn't been destroyed and he got stuck in there until the wall got destroyed, but he was in the process of being idle and was forced to do meditation while waiting. That'd be my guess. Mm. 
harpsichord is ready. Uh, where is the harpsichord? Oh, it's right there. Oh, it's pretty good quality, too. So destroying the non-jade walls, so you can replace them with jade and raise the impressiveness up so it's not uh, teeter-tottering on the threshold. And then we'll do the Praetor Ceremony and be able to fully satisfy uh, both Sea Panda and uh, Devil Eyes' expectations as a result. I think I counted out the amount of jade that I had. Is my math right? Yeah, we have one jade left over, so yeah, I did that right. Good. The impressiveness is four over the minimum requirement, so it's not right on the uh, right on the border. So a little bit of felt, and it shouldn't drop. <sighs> Skyra, when will you learn? Ink wins every time. Fighting the godlike brawler with the legendary sword is just a bad idea. Just a really extraordinarily bad idea. And now you've put uh, blood everywhere in the thr throne room. All right, so we are ready officially for the ceremony. I am going to schedule everyone to be inside the mountain so that they're close to where the ceremony takes place. And Devil Eyes is going to become a Praetor, being even more conceited than before, which I'm just so not looking forward towards. There is a lot of uh, sandstone chunks where their horrible environment happened, but hauling that stuff takes so long that it, it, it will take like five times longer to haul that than to make new chunks over here, next to where we stone cut. Haul timing is the main consideration there. Oh no! It's 162 out of 170 for the impressiveness. Um, oh well. Oh well. It's good enough. <laughs> he gets another shoot frenzy. It's so annoying. How? Honestly, how is he? Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. So I just learned something new. Devil Eyes is getting shoot frenzies because so normally when you get a, a friend when, when you get an inspiration like shoot frenzy you need to have at least a skill of three to meet the requirements so for instance um, he will never get a uh, a medical inspiration a surgical inspiration because he doesn't have a medical skill of three it's it's the minimum requirement for an inspiration he's getting shoot frenzies despite the fact that he has a skill of zero because he has genes that lowers it by four. So if he didn't have genes that lowered it by four, he'd have a shooting skill of four. So it calculates your pre-gene skill level, not your post-gene skill level, which is something I never knew. Learn something new every day. And it was grandiose, which is the best possible uh, result for three extra honor. And he's a Praetor. So he has a Psylank 4. What did I learn? Got another permit. Uh, so we won't do mining, plant work, dumb labor. Uh, plant work and mining are restricted for Praetors. Yoda's very cute behind me. <laughs> um... And he learns skip. Permit choice. Salvo.
What does the quality actually do? It awards bonus um, honor when you have a high quality. So, um, Devil Eyes received three honor as a sign of respect from the White Dominion for gathering 16 spectators. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. So the spectator count is the extra honor. The, the quality is um, mood bonus. So if I take a look at, like, uh, Drea here, a grandiose bestowing ceremony is a higher mood bonus of plus six, whereas if it was, like, a, a crummy quality, it might have a mood negative. So it's a, just like a leader speech or a throne speech, it, it affects uh, moods. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld Anomaly Eldritch Guards, which originally streamed live on Twitch August 11th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming stream. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow guardsmen. <laughs>